And did you know that according to Forbes, 80% of businesses will fail within the first 18 months? So I'm going to share with you some invaluable lessons that I learned from running a photography business. Lessons that have helped me to beat the odds and lessons that have helped me even in life. The lessons I learned while being an entrepreneur, while running a photography business. And I think that it will help somebody out there. So hi everyone, my name is Sean. I started a photography business in 2011. And since then, till today, my photography business is still alive. And I would say that my business has been very, very successful has stood the test of time but i've been through ups and downs and you know in this video i'm going to share with you some of those experiences and some of the lessons i've learned along the way i've been through the ups and downs of starting and growing a business and i'm excited to share those experiences with you today now running a photography business has its own set of challenges you know from competition with so many other photographers out there you know trying to stay relevant trying to keep your head above the water from marketing from dealing with difficult clients, from deals that have gone bad, dealing with the environment, business infrastructure, things like sometimes epileptic power supply, all of those issues. There are so many things that threaten the survival of a business, especially a growing business, a business that is just starting. So it's a constant juggling act to stay ahead of the game, to stay on top, to keep your head above water. Now let's dive into the five key lessons that I've learned from running a successful photography business. The first lesson is that in business, especially in the photography business, you have to know your worth and know the value that you bring to the table. It's so important that you do this because this affects everything. It affects the way you interact with your clients. It, it affects the way you, you even price your business. It affects the way you negotiate with your clients. It affects the way you carry yourself, the way you dress, the way you present yourself and present your business to your to the public, to the audi your audience and to your clients. I had to learn this lesson very early on because at some point I started having challenges with my pricing because I would put a price on my services and the feedback I would get from the clients that would come, the potential clients that would come, would make me question whether I put value on my services or whether I'm just out to get as any money I can get. I remember a particular client who was really pricing me down and I agreed to the lower prices just because I was afraid of losing the client. And then he made a statement that suggested that he was actually doing me a favor by patronizing me. You know, and that stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, hmm. So I've even compromised my standards in pricing just to get this client. And the client still feels that the client is doing me a favor. Interestingly, I had to turn that deal down. I returned his deposit and I decided to, I need to look into the whole thing about my pricing, the value that I put in my business, the value that I think I am worth, and the kind of client that appreciates me and appreciates my work, the kind of client I really want for my business. Because not every client is for your business. Not every client is for you. So it's very important. I see a lot of photographers out there taking any job they can get, accepting ridiculously low prices, just because they want to, you know, make money. And you will always struggle. And you find out that the clients who price you the lowest, clients who do not value your work, they're the ones who give you the most headache. So very early on, know the value of your work. Know the value of photography. Photography is actually priceless. You know, that you, you, the money we put on the service is just a token because the memories that photographs create, the, the memories that photographs store, the value that they have in society far exceeds the price tag that you put on it. Wedding photographs, photographs of your childhood, those things increase in value over time and they cannot be replaced. You cannot go back to your childhood and create those images, right? Even in terms of world history, learning about history. If those photographs were not taken during World War and you know all those other times, historical significant times, how would we even know exactly how life was then? So the value of those pictures has increased over time and they will continue to increase because generations from now, people will still be amazed to see pictures of the 1970s or the 1780s or the 1700s. You see what I mean? So you are actually creating timeless art and your, your work is so important. You must never allow yourself to be priced low. But it all goes back to how you value yourself. And this lesson translates also into life. You know, you also have to know your worth. You have to know the value that you bring to the table in any relationship, in any business deal, in any kind of setting. So if you're starting a business right now, see your business as valuable. See your business as a very valuable part of today of the society that you're bringing this business to 
and you must always let that affect even the way you conduct yourself. I see photographers dressing up anyhow, going for weddings, wearing slippers, or wearing short niggas. You know, you don't have to look like a servant. You don't have to look like you're there for a job. When I go for weddings, I dress up as if I'm a guest. And that's the way to do it, you know, not too flamboyant, but at least have some respect in the way you carry yourself. And that way, people also value you as a photographer and value your business. Now, the next very important lesson that my photography business taught me is that it's very important to learn how to adapt. It's very important to, to be adaptable because times change, you know, times and seasons, they change constantly. The way I used to run my business in 2011, 2012 changed over time from the way I ran it in 2022, 2023. That's because I had to adapt. There's no way I could continue to do things the same way, all right? Even the technology changes, even the cameras change. Now we have faster cameras, faster memory cards. We have software that you can use to recover, you know, data that is lost. You have um, online tools for onboarding clients. We have websites, we have social media, so many things. So. You know, it's so important that you learn how to adapt with the times. You have to stay current with the trends. You have to learn, you update your software, for instance, learn the new software that is coming out, learn all these new applications that are coming out. You have to adapt to the way people do business, the way people even engage with clients. You have to adapt to the communication trends of the day. Back in the day, it was mostly emails and phone calls. But now you have WhatsApp, you have WhatsApp for business, you have Telegram. We have, um, you know, cloud computing. There are so many things. So it's really important that you be adaptable. And this lesson translates to life as well. And in life also, you have to be adaptable. You know, if you are within a certain age bracket, like those of us that are 40 and above, you can't do things the way we used to do in our 20s, right? You have to settle down and learn what are the new trends now? What are the ways people are doing business? What are the tools for business? What are the ways people market? Back then, Instagram was the, the main thing. Like if you had, if you were really active on Instagram, your business would just be growing. Things have changed. Instagram doesn't care about photography businesses anymore. So you have to adapt. Going to do the same thing over and again, over and again, posting on Instagram and wondering why you're not getting followers, you're not getting business. That's not going to work anymore. You have to look for other channels to be able to share your work and meet new clients. So being adaptable is a very important part of, you know, growing your business and succeeding in life. Now, the third lesson that my photography business taught me is that talent is not everything. The fact that you are an ace with the camera, like once you pick up the camera, mad pictures, like you're so good, that's not gonna make your business grow. That's not going to make you successful in business, especially photography business. There's so many other things that go with the talent that in fact support the talent and prop the talent up. Things like, you know, how you manage your time, like discipline, personal discipline, self-discipline, things like learning how to market, things like learning how to audit your accounts and balance your books in terms of your finances, learning how to manage your studio, manage your team if you have staff, things like learning how to manage your own energy, your personal effectiveness, things like learning to read and learn and gaining new knowledge. You know, there's so many things. So it's not enough to be talented. A lot of photographers make that mistake today, thinking that, wow, I can create amazing pictures. I have the best Sony camera or the best Canon camera or the best Nikon camera. So guaranteed, when you people see my portraits, you know, clients will just be lining up for me. Yes, they may start lining up, right? But if they notice bad attitudes, if they notice indiscipline, you're always coming late for appointments or coming late to shoots, you're not delivering your clients work on time, you know, you have an arrogant attitude. There are so many things that can negate the effect of great talent. In fact, that's one of the major things I learned from my photography business. I learned how to do other things. I learned how to market. I learned how to be good at marketing, social media management. I learned how to relate to people. I learned how to, I had to learn how to be confident. You know, naturally I'm an introvert. I'm not the kind of person who really wants to always walk up to people and just, you know, get into people's space. But I had to learn how to be bold. I had to learn how to walk up to people and come out of my shell. So that's what photography business will do for you. Any business, in fact, that interfaces with people, you have to learn how to come out of your shell and learn so many other things to support. Even if you make the best cakes in the world, or even if you, you do the best makeup, there are so many other things that come with business, with keeping a business successful that you also have to learn. And the funny thing is that those things also improve you as a person. 
So your business is not the only one benefiting. You as a person, you're also benefiting. And this leads me to the next point, which is that courage is very necessary for growth. To take your business on the long haul, to play the long game in terms of business, to keep your business going, you have to grow, you have to expand. And one key ingredient for that growth and that expansion is courage. Being able to act even in the face of fear. I can't count the number of times when I've had to do a new assignment, a new job, and I have been, I was so nervous and afraid of failing, but I still went ahead and did it. That's how I got into NGO photography, because when I started photography, I started as a wedding photographer, and then I moved into portrait photography. Along the line, I, an opportunity came for me to provide services to an NGO, and that was a terrain I'd not crossed before, and I did it. And it was successful. I provided services to all kinds of corporate clients. I've gone to Lagos to shoot um, private jets for Dangote. I've gone photography missions in remote parts of, the, of Nigeria, places where there's no network, no light, and all of those things. And, you know, you have to be bold. You have to be courageous. You can't just stay in your comfort zone. And you say, because you're shy in front of people, you won't go out and do what you need to do. Of course, it's good for you to know your area, the parts of photography, the photography business that you're comfortable with, or the parts of any business that you're comfortable with, you know, know your strengths and your weaknesses and play on your strengths. That is all taken for granted. But a lot of times, sometimes you have to come out of your comfort zone. I mean, naturally, I'm a backseat kind of person, you know, even in class, I'm the kind of person who prefers to just stay at the back and to be unseen. But if I had remained that way, how would I have done all the things I've done and pushed my business forward? You know, in wedding photography, for instance, you have to be out there, right there in front of the church, in front of everybody. You have to be bold in, in the way you ask your clients to pose. When you're posing your clients, you know, everybody's eye is on you. So if you're not comfortable working under that kind of pressure where everybody's eye is on you, you know, you may not be able to push your photography business to that next level. I define courage as acting even in the face of fear. So learning how to do that actually helps. And in life, you know, we're translating all these lessons to life. You can't help but be courageous. All right. Life is full of scary things. We are always constantly bombarded with either bad news, negative news, fears that come from within and from without. But to do this life, to succeed in life, you have to be courageous. So that is the lesson. This next point, this is the final point. I mean, it's really one of the most impactful aspects of running a successful photography business. And that is networking, building strong relationships with clients, their families, their collaborators, building strong relationships with other vendors, like makeup artists, like, um, um, you know, the other vendors you meet at the wedding, DJs. It's probably the most underestimated or unrecognized, but most impactful life transforming part of running a photography business that you hear people talking about. If you sit down to calculate the value and the changes that have happened in your life because of the people that you met, either fellow photographers or other creatives, other vendors, clients, it's amazing. And I think that is the most powerful or the most valuable gift of photography that a photography business can give to you. I have met a wide range of people, people that I would not have met in my normal course of life, doing my normal nine to five job, or people that I would not have met if I had stayed and resisted the urge to pick up a camera and start a business. I have met presidents and ex-presidents, vice presidents. I've sat in a room and on the other end of the seat was Obasanjo at 4 a.m. in the morning before his flight to one country. I have met people in remote villages, parts of Nigeria that you never believed existed, parts of the world that are so far away from civilization, if you want to call it that way. You know, and I've met people whose stories touch your heart, people who are really, really far removed from your own normal walk of life. I have met fantastic photographers, people who have inspired me, who have changed me, who have encouraged me. I have met clients that have become friends, that have become like family. I have met clients that many years later, we were family friends. We travel to other parts of the world just to go and visit them and spend time with them. And I'll end this with a personal example, a personal story that encapsulates what I'm talking about. And that's the client who came to the studio to take photographs of his wife. I think it was his wife's birthday or so, or a family portraits. I can't remember exactly. And we got talking and I told him that I do a couple of other things. You know, I do graphic design. I do document design, infographics, and all this other visual communication type of stuff. And he said, oh, wow, his boss was looking for someone like that to help her with her PowerPoint presentations and document design and all of those things. And he made the link up. And I would say that that has been one of the most fruitful and the most rewarding relationships I've had in the last five years of my life. 
because of that relationship, I have made a lot of money, you know, providing services. And that money has come in at a very important time in my life. I, I remember remarking to him the other day that it's funny how things turn out, right? I mean, we met just by random chance in the studio. You came to the studio to take pictures. And look at us now, we have a working relationship many, many years later. And we're working across the globe, doing good work. And the relationship has been mutually beneficial, not just in the work-related sense, but in a personal sense as well. So you never know who that person that walks into your studio is going to be to you in the next five, 10 years. You never know. And that is one of the major things that I've learned from my photography business. That is to treat people well, to value and cherish the relationships that you make or create in the course of running your business. Those relationships may transform your life in the future, may transform the lives of your children and so on and so forth. These five lessons have been like the cornerstones of my business success. Let me recap. Knowing your value, knowing your worth, you know, because that affects everything, including how you present your business and how you price your business and how you relate to yourself and your customer. Um, knowing that talent is not enough. You know, you have to also learn so many other skills that help you run a business successfully. Um, knowing that courage is a key ingredient for growth. You have to be bold. You have to be able to take steps. You have to be able to leave your comfort zone and act even if you're afraid. And the fourth one is that you have to be adaptable. Change with the times. Don't remain old school. Learn new technologies, learn new software, learn new th ways of doing things. And lastly, networking is very powerful. You have to learn how to manage people. You have to learn how to value the relationships and the acquaintances and all the people that you meet in the course of running your business because those relationships have value beyond that in initial transaction, that exchange of money and services. Beyond all of that, the relationship may add value to your life. And I'm talking about relationships, not just with your clients, but even with other colleagues and other people in, in the business. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you found these lessons helpful, I would like to consider subscribing to my channel for more tips on this creative industry that we're in. I'm talking about photography, filmmaking, graphic design, and you know, all of those things. And tips also on self-improvement and also explorations. I like to explore new places with my camera. And so I share a lot of videos from trips to different cities, different places, different regions. And once in a while, when I get to travel, I also create videos about my travels. So if you like that kind of content and you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so that you know when I post new videos. And do check out the other videos on the channel as well. Thanks for watching. Till the next one.